welcome to the first ever podcast of the Tom and Jerry Show. Yeah, how are you doing? Uh, my name is Tom O'Mahony. And I'm Jerry McBride. How are you keeping? I suppose we a uh, brief intro into the two of us. We're both stand-up comedians. Chancellor's at this thing. We're both looking at the, the actual podcast machine here like a couple of aliens looking at a cow. Shouldn't uh, there be a red light on that? Uh, yep. Yeah. And there's two red lights. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> We're sitting here like, uh, I don't know what, in a car. On the side of the road is absolutely fantastic. To give you a brief insight, Jerry and uh, myself, like I said, we're stand-up comedians. Jerry's of uh, writer of Waterford Whispers. Yeah, I write. I write. Uh, I write uh, for Waterford Whispers News under the tutelage of the wonderful Colin Williamson down in Waterford. Fantastic. I suppose if anybody was to know me, they go Colchi if they knew me, <laughs> and if they don't know me but they kind of know me, they know me as I suppose Tarquin from Dame One Ivor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's that out of the way. Anyway. That's us. Just so you put faces to the to the voices there. Uh, I suppose other than I suppose we're, we're going. There's going to be a lot of ranting. We know that's going to happen anyway. We know there's going to be a lot of ranting. Uh, first and foremost, so ease yourself in. Yeah, ease yourself <laughs> in. <into it. laughs> we'll start off with uh, we'll start off with a little segment called giving out yards. Giving out yards. Where yeah, episode yeah. by episode, we will give out yards on occasion give like, out miles I like the imp- yeah I like the imperialistic sound of it too it's not giving out meters just giving doesn't out sound a meter. the same no no no, no. We're, we're giving out yards that's what this comes to but uh, yeah my, Tom what have, you my, got, what have you got this week my uh, my gear grinder this week was a, a thing called sugardaddy.com I didn't know about it apparently it's going, uh, did you like up until I didn't know about this until you told me about it no. 20,000 women have signed up to it in Ireland apparently and, I, and what is this what is this Tom it's essentially where uh, for I suppose a little less commitment than you would get in a normal relationship these tend to be middle-aged older american dudes basically fine girls on sites like this that they like the look of and they commit to giving them a fundage each month and gifts for their i suppose for the hanging out for for, yeah yeah, for for their crocheting skills for their crocheting skills and there's been widespread justification of this like there was a woman on the radio talking about it I've read it in the news I was like well you know a girl's got to get paid it's it's but this is this is not like this is not like tinder this is not where two like-minded individuals no, 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 no. match off a succession of things they're both interested in uh the, on sugardaddy.com the two parties are interested in two things yeah. both these uh one might be more interested in money and the other might be more interested in what he can get for them yeah yeah, simple as that. That's it. There's, That's a, it. There, there, there's a there's a there's a name for this in olden times. Yeah, think, there was. You know? It's the oldest profession in the world. But they um, say. but uh, the the uh, the other thing is that you got to see these guys with all their money and such. Like you know, you think to themselves now, mm. you, you've got all the money going for you. But you still have to go on sugardaddy.com. It wasn't a charm school that, no. they, that they made their money anyway. There's no <laughs> yeah. way they made... I mean, you'd have to assume you're fair, you'd be fairly desperate. Or is it a control thing, is it? Or what is it? Do you know what I think, Tom? And I'm going to tell you this now straight. I think it's absolute laziness. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, yeah just, that's it. I think it's the height <laughs> of laziness, right? And I'm not on Tinder or I'm not on anything like this. I'm a married man, um... So all, all this kind of thing passed me by. All this. Uh, I'd like to point out I'm not on Tinder either. I'm happily. No, in a you're relationship, happily yeah. in a relationship. So t- a Tinder or, uh, and such like has passed us by. Uh, I'm I'm a, I'm of a generation where if you wanted to meet a girl, you rang her house. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nine times out of ten, it would be her father who would answer, mm-hmm. and then you'd have that conversation of asking for his daughter, and then he'd embarrass her by saying she's actually in the jacks. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, you'd be lucky if he said that. I used to have to like run a, run the gauntlet of questions. Did you? Who are you? Go, oh, oh, whose people are you? What do you what do you what do you want with uh, my daughter? Oh. And, you know, well, you know, you 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 you, you didn't want to give him the but truth of it, regardless of, <laughs> regardless of how how much pursuit you had to do and all the rest of it, regardless of even if you were if we were single men nowadays, there is no and I've had my lazy days. Neither one of us are. Olympic athletes of or any of any sorts or you know Fortune 500 owners. No, I have never been so lazy to the point where I would go. You know what I need to do? I need to get online. Do you know what it is? It's do you know what it is? It's it's not like let's go out and let's let's see who we can meet and la la. If I'm not going to meet anyone, I'm not leaving the house. Yeah, I'm lining, <laughs> yeah. I'm lining this shit up before I set yeah. foot out the door. But you've accepted the fact that you're not meeting anybody by not leaving the house. I think like, it's. Yeah. I mean, like if you take the internet out of it, oh, the internet is a wonderful thing. But if you take it out of the equation and say, how would you do this in a non-internet thing? But basically, with Tinder, you would stroll around town with your tool hanging out 
until you found someone that said, oh, tool, I have a, yeah. pl- I have a place I'm for that. Co- I am compatible with I, that, oh, too. Yeah, yeah. I'm compatible with that. And then you would you would swipe. I don't even know which way do you stri- swipe for a, for a girl you're interested in, left or right? You, I don't know. Do you swipe? Oh, yeah, I was... Who was telling me about it, actually? And it was... Um, yeah, you do. We'll, you, we'll maybe not name you, them. You, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. Okay, so to say 20,000, I think that's a strong figure now. I, th- I think that's strong. And we talked about being lazy and everything else and that we would never, regardless of how much money I had, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't bring myself. I, I mean, if I was pay, if I'm paying somebody, I want a product. Like, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? If you're just throwing somebody if, if money and all you get to do is hold hands and whatever else, there is no product at the end of it. Well, I'm sure I want sugar, a wall sugar daddy or something com, like sugardaddy.com kind of laying everything out there in front of you. Is there a wall building section? There probably is, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I th- I'd want to see your credentials. All right. But, uh, but here's the thing. Could you ever imagine it going the other way if there was a sugarmommy.com? Uh, I can absolutely see uh, I can see a market for it, yeah. Can you? Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. I mean, some old one looking like a tea bag. Well, they might not they might not necessarily look like a tea bag or indeed tea bag from the 80s show, <laughs> tea bag. That's what I was thinking of, tea bag. For... <laughs> my god, I just went flooding back tea bag. Tea bag. Oh my god. All right, back in the days when tea bags were something you got tea out of or a lady on the TV. Yeah, that's all yeah, you yeah, ever. Yeah, that's I wasn't going anywhere there else with no that tea other bag. There was no connotation with the word tea bag. And then you know, puberty hit and everything got ruined. You know what I mean? You started learning new terms for everything. You couldn't say a sentence. Oh, I ruined all the good stuff. The innocence of it. But, uh, yeah, no, I mean, like, if there wasn't a lassie and she was rich and she was looking for uh, a young stud on sugarmommy.com, absolutely, yeah. Do you? I'd be a pure pig that wouldn't hook, yeah. I know, but I can't. I can't see a flipping deal. I, I, listen, I was hungry in college. <laughs> and I ate a lot of coca noodles. But at no point did I ever think, you know what I need to do? I need to find myself. I need to find myself a sugar some, mommy. Some blue haired, bingo loving individual who needs I, help getting a radio tuned in. Yeah. I just, I just, just happens to have a load of money. I couldn't, I couldn't get my head around. I know there's, there's. I can see it. There's a market for, there's an absolutely market. If there's a market for sugar daddies, there's a market for sugar mommies. And Maybe we need to get on that, so. Well, I, I need to get a bit more sugar. <laughs> <laughs> you, but it, what was the most worrying about this site is because reading through it and all the rest, the sugar daddies are called sugar daddies. But the women that sign up to this right. are called sugar babies. Sugar babies. Yeah. Well, that's a little disturbing. Yeah, that, that troubled me big time. That's, I mean, like, it, it, it's, it's okay for a lady, uh, to, I think, to just say, well, you know, I've got a sugar daddy. You know, yeah. I've got an older man. Well, He's a daddy, a little... you'd always assume that it's somebody in... Yeah. Yeah, there, uh, yeah, he's got a little salt Above adolescence in the hair, yeah, like, yeah. You know, he's, he's, he's going a little grey He's got like that distinguished look But a you know. sugar baby Yeah, that's just creepy My first thought when I heard it was Jelly baby Dipped in sugar But yeah. then I thought what everybody else is probably But that's me, I'm a weirdo But then I thought what everybody else would be thinking Good God Yeah, like, I mean what, what, what could we call it? You couldn't call it a sugar daughter Oh, that sounds even worse There's nothing sounding good out of any no. of this No they pro- you have to imagine they trialed everything. Oh, they ran everything through the through the. Through what the would thing. be the other, yeah? There'd be sugar daughter, sugar daughter, uh, sugar offspring. I think would be. Uh, <sighs> oh, it's getting be, incestuous then, isn't it? It's really yeah. I mean, like um, that's the thing. It's it's because it's been glazed over. It's got a kind of branded idea of sugar daddy to have a sugar daddy or whatever. Nobody has kind of gone on the whole. You don't ever want to call somebody you're dating your daddy. Your daddy, no, no. Let it be said at this point in time that I don't believe either of us really give a fuck what anybody does with the money. Or You're absolutely like right. But with that said, we can comment they on They got it. way more. The problem, <laughs> I'll tell you, all the problem is that I'm jealous that they got newspaper column and I didn't. <laughs> That's all that is. They're not talking about me. They're, um, it's, it's, it's the odd thing. There was, a, there was a segment on the website. I, I checked on it. And you know what the funny thing about this is, Tom? Huh? Uh, you said check out sugardaddy.com and we'll talk about it this evening. Yeah. Uh, there's not just one website. There's like 20 with different spellings of sugar daddy. How do you spell sugar daddy differently? D-A-D-D-I-E. Oh. Then there was sugar hyphen daddy dot com. <laughs> was sugar daddy dating dot com. It was like, a, this is not a niche industry. This is like a, this is a lot going on here. Wow. I and the one I went into, there was a picture. Uh, there was a, there's, there's various pictures of uh, elderly gentlemen, and they're like Jose Mourinho looking. Oh, of course, yeah, they're going to be gorgeous lo- looking. Sort of like but, swarthy yeah, yeah. Italian sort of fellas. Um... Not uh, not uh, diesel laundering millionaires. No. <laughs> <laughs> Fellow who made his money off gypsum no. <laughs> and windows and insulation. Yeah. And 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 the ladies are all um, 
they're all like uh, they all look like Kylie Jenner. They all look like oh, yeah, twenty yeah, yeah. years of age. At least they don't look like Bruce Jenner. <laughs> no, well, that's true. But give him time. Um, then has and Bruce Jenner started to turn into a woman. He, I, I believe he has. Yeah. Did you see? Like I only noticed it the other day watching. I don't know if you watched the rugby match, but Joe Schmidt is definitely turning into a young Bruce Jenner. Right. Look, look at the two pictures. It's his complexion is way too good. He's he's looping around. Oh, come on, Bruce. But come here to me. Yeah. Oh, the the pictures on the website. It's all like uh, so. It's Jose Mourinho or whoever. Uh, yeah. And the ladies are all like swarthy little um, little types. And every single picture has him in a suit <laughs> with no tie. Oh well, that shows a guy who Which cares. Means he's, he's, he's he's a guy that okay, he's rich, but this guy is just not some footy duty, right? She's in a black dress. And every picture has him putting a necklace around her neck from behind. <laughs> so it's just like, get used to this. It's just not like a picture. Do you remember that old ad that where it was for it was was it for John Smith's beer where she scooped out beer and she put it in her at the phone. <laughs> right. And it looks like one of those ads, like you know, where he's like a swarthy looking bloke and she turns around and goes, Hey love, me neck you know. <laughs> there is oh, I mean if there, if there's one other if there's one other dating site that I think um and for two uh, attached men, uh, Tom, uh, yeah, I we, sure, we sure know a lot about dating sites, I will I, say. Well, I'm glad that you get to play this later for your missus, because if she goes through your phone history, it's going to be horrific. Yeah, why were, you, why were you looking up sugardaddy.com? You'd be young too, yeah. You're like... <laughs> uh, there's, there's another one called elitesingles.com. You might have seen this. Oh, I've seen the ads. They're horrific. The, the ads are horrific. It's like, uh, it's, 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 it's really... Like in life. Yeah, yeah that guy. I just want to be fussy about who I go out. It's, it's one of these things... Where they're selling a dating site, but they're trying to make it out to be a step above. Mm. It's like you know, well, you don't want to be going for like little fucking teenagers with mini skirts or things like this. You want like a classy lady. You want elite singles, and then a lady will come on and be like, "You don't want some fella who might have a previous history of drug abuse. You want to be with elite singles." And we run all these checks and all this kind of things. The funny thing about all that is like they advertise it during the day. On TLC, <laughs> yeah, because the people watching TLC are just they're just stepped off their yacht. Yeah, they're they're, yeah, they're, yeah. they're really looking for it. They, they advertise that shit in the breaks in Jeremy Kyle. Oh, <laughs> it's like they, I I broke somebody's heart the other day. Oh that my God. They thought it was the Learning Channel, or the it is the Learning Channel, which yeah. is ironic. But they thought it was Tender Loving Care. Tender Loving Care. Well, it's long since ceased to be the Learning Channel unless, unless you want to, you want to learn to, about rednecks. Yeah, you want to learn about how to convert six fingered people into, and, into, yeah. into your dinner. Oh, all right. I, I well, I don't want to say rant over, but I think yeah. I suppose we've yeah. given we've given eight yards. Well, we could he- yeah. I don't think there's enough memory on this thing for how angry <laughs> the two of us are. But I suppose yeah. Well, here, listen. This is something that everybody always asks us, and we all they're always interested to know. And yeah, they, and it's the one question I suppose we all. It's the one we're, one we're, we're comedians uh, gigs as such as we are worst gigs worst gigs the, ever the gigs the good gigs don't stay in your head. You no. think they'll stay in your head, but they don't. They the do worst not. gigs stay in your head, which is why we call this segment. My worst gig ever. <laughs> I left that one to you. That was good. <laughs> and uh, 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 yeah, it, it is. Nobody ever wants to hear about oh. your best gig ever. They want to hear the. They want to hear the gory stories. Yeah, nobody. Yeah, because there's no fun. It's like your newspapers wouldn't sell if it was all nice stuff. So this. So every yeah. week, every podcast, we're going to be coming up with another worst gig, and we could run a hundred. Oh yeah, plenty of, of them. And we plenty, plenty of, of them. them. I'll feel this one this week. My mm. worst gig ever was. Uh, I was only starting to stand up about maybe two, three years. Things were starting to go well. Yeah, you know that. You know that period where you start to get bookings. You're like, this is it. Yeah. This is it. You've 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 you've, you've crested. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And yeah. I got booked for uh, a gig in a hotel. When I mean, you get gig for a book booked for a gig in a hotel, that's oh, like wow. the creme de la creme. Yeah. Because not only do you get to do the gig, you get to stay over for free. Yeah. And now you're like, I th- this is this it. is the bit where you're kind of hoping they're going. Wonder will they throw me in a few free pints? As yeah, well. it's one of them. Is there a drink? Yeah, and, you, and you, you don't want to say it when you're being booked, but like your heart's going. So let me get this straight. You're going to pay me to come to you, and I get to stay over there for free, and yeah. I might get a few free drinks, and I get me breakfast in the morning. And everything. It's, it's like everything sort of clicks, and and after a while. Uh, it, the, the luster goes off and yeah. after, after a few fucking gigs like this. The luster goes off, and anyway, uh, I had only just started going out with uh, with my then girlfriend, my now oh, wife. Oh right, yeah, yeah. And she hadn't really seen me perform anywhere. So this is so just this. this is just mountain up. You wow. Know I mean? She didn't come to it, Tom. I brought her to it. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh. I was like, you know what? You stick around Oh, you're Chris me. Rock. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. I was like, why don't we go, why don't we go away for the weekend? 
Oh, well, you know, we don't really have a whole pile of money at the time. Don't worry. worry about <laughs> I got My this. people are putting me up. My yeah. people are putting me up. Yeah, I got a gig. They're putting me up. You get your breakfast in the morning. <laughs> you know, it was just... It, 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 it was <laughs> I, just love, I love that this is why I know exactly where this is you going. Know, yeah. And I could tell you a hundred stories that all start with that same opening. But, you know, it just was... It was just... It was just right. It was just right to be back. Okay. Okay. So I mean it. Yeah. We're, we're here. I landed, the, I landed the gig in the hotel... North or south of the country? It's north. It was up in Donegal. And in a very, very sleepy town called Stranorlar. And... Stranorlar? Yes. Stranorlar and Bally Buffet are two towns which are right beside each other. I've, ne- I've, I've heard of almost every town. In the- I've never heard of Stranorlar. Have you heard of Bally Buffet? Yeah, yeah. Well, then yeah. that's Stranorlar. Okay. There's no divide. There's no road. It just stops being one and starts being another. Okay, right, like right. They split it down the middle like it's the fucking odd couple. <laughs> <laughs> I know, just have an image. This is my side did of the ever, town. Did you ever see that old Steptoe and Son where they split the entire apartment? Yeah, exactly with- that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly that. Uh, so we were up there and we're rocking out and... Um, we, we we get to the gig and there's nobody in the ballroom. Lovely. And huh. and like they, What time is this at? This is this is at like half eight. Okay, yeah, yeah. And they had the ballroom lined out for everything. Okay, this is a proper what you'd have a wedding. Theater show like. And it is all the way to the back. Okay. There's no stage at the front, you're just standing on like the carpet section. Oh, yeah, and it's it, one from, from the tall comedians. It's 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 it's, it's from wherever you can stand, uh, you would have a long, long journey up to the stage. Oh, in full view of everyone because the lights were all on. Which as uh, you know, uh, people t- listening there to there was this, no backstage green room no, area. No, no, and 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 people listening to this might think that uh, stand up comedians make a lot of excuses and saying what you had a shit gig because the lights were all on. Yeah. Did your jokes suddenly not get funny because your lights were on? But really, when you lower the lights in a room, it really creates an atmosphere. And well, just flip it the other way. How many times in your life, anybody who does listen to this, have you ever? Had a sensual moment with the lights full with the throttle. lights blaring on, yeah. yeah. Like if you went to the cinema and the lights were all on, immediately you'll be like, "What the fuck's going on?" Yeah. yeah so yeah. when you have a, when you have an audience sitting watching you on stage and the lights are all on, they're they're nervous and they're they're, they're less inclined to laugh because they're shifting in their seat. People like to laugh in anonymity, and there's anonymity in darkness. Exactly, but when you're but you know all this was 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 moot without a crowd, <laughs> which there was not one of. But you're making excuses in your head, you see, at this time because you're thinking maybe this is one of those towns that doesn't get going till ten o'clock. That doesn't get going till ten o'clock. No, this time wasn't going to get going. In actual fact, the only people that <laughs> the only people that knew there was a gig on here tonight were the comedians. Oh, there was no. How many comedians were on? There was three of us. Okay, and uh, and 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 I'll, I'll keep it to myself and not mention the other guys who actually had good gigs, just to further compound my misery. But uh, nobody knew it was on, so we got in, and there's no one there. Okay, and they've got four hundred seats lined up. Four hundred. Oh, it was like okay. the whole thing was done. How many people do you reckon are in that town? Oh, four hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Three ninety-five by the push. Um, so rather than just say, "Well, let bygones be bygones," give these lads a few pints and, and let them go up to their rooms. Yeah. Uh, they wanted to press ahead, so what they did was they went out into the lobby and corralled in as many people as oh. they could. All right, which is now uh, people who never had an intention of coming in in the first no, place were being so, hunted. So, in. so, right. so, so, if you picture like a sleepy Donegal town on a Saturday night, who's loitering around in the uh, lobby of a hotel that they're staying in? The elderly, mm. the people that don't have the energy to go down the town, who are just enjoying themselves. Yeah, and they're chilling out in the in the lobby, and then they come along. And go, sorry, we just like tickets for a comedy show. It's free. Go on ahead in, Ooh. and they managed to corral in. What it was six couples, six pairs did of they, people. Average, where, where did they sit? Average average age about seventy. I swear to God, they were oh old, my okay? god! And they sat, uh, not even in a group, not <laughs> even in the front row. <laughs> they just they just fucking pockmarked themselves around the room at random, oh. just like with their sherry. With their sherry, I swear to God, there was like between each couple, there had to be about thirty seats. Just, that's it In all directions Ah, That's how spread out they were On top of that They managed Somehow From anywhere I don't know where They got these in Stranorla Or on a fucking Saturday night They got in Five Turkish men Five right. Five Turkish Just men Just five Turks Just five lads Don't know what they were doing there Surely the local barbers Having a good time I don't know But they've all landed in and uh, I went on and I just crashed a plane into the sea. It was <laughs> fucking horrendous. Oh my god! It, 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 you know, you'll take. That. How long did you do? Oh, how long were you supposed? to I was do? supposed to do fifteen. 
Uh, how long did six you get? and a half. <laughs> at best, at best, I swear to God. Was there an MC? There was. There was an MC who walked on and said, "How are you all keeping?" Nobody clapped. He said, "Here's your first act." Oh, <laughs> oh I swear to God, I I'm not going to tell it, but my uh, one of the ones I, I'm thinking, I'll tell it at another stage. I'll stay tuned for purely this. Purely because it's down south, but it almost word for word. Yeah, was well, these like these, that. these things come again. Only I I had a good crowd, but like that, just a good like, sized crowd. But nobody wanted to be there. Oh, this is it, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's like, and, and there's nothing, like, you're you're really on the back foot. So I ploughed into my material, which was largely based around what it was like to be a young man living in the city, uh, to these elderly people and Turkish guys who didn't appear to have any English. Jesus. Uh, and, and the old folks just stared me out of it, the bored into my soul with these looks. It wasn't even that you're a shit comedian, pal, or we've heard funnier jokes than this. It was just like... I wish serious? he'd sing a song. Are, 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 I are, wish he'd sing a song do, right now. Do your parents know you do this? Are you not ashamed of your life? You may as well have been a stripper on stage. You really might as well have just been a Protestant. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they really just absolutely stared a hole straight through me. Uh, and I was, and, and, and I remember one lady uh, just kind of leaned forward in the seat and she goes, do you think any of this is funny? Oh, oh it was just like, and I was like, uh, not to you, to the, to somebody else she was with? No, to me. Oh my, all right. Yeah, to me. Because you were saying it because you obviously didn't think it was funny. Yeah, I, I was just, well, I was kind of hoping you didn't think it was funny, but this is not going to work. So that was all right. I said, did thank you. Did you get one much. single laugh? No, fuck no, I did not. I, I got this. <laughs> when, when I left the stage, I got this. <laughs> right? <laughs> so that's bad, right? That's a bad gig by any man's standards, right? Oh. And as, as Thomas said there, uh, We've done several gigs like this. We could tell you a hundred stories and it'll all go the same. But what makes this one stick out in my mind as one mm. of my worst gigs of all time was that I was staying in that hotel for the night. And so were they. Oh! So even though I went to the bar to enjoy my, which turned out not to be free drink, uh, they were sitting right across <laughs> me. And there was just this general eerie vibe of them looking across at me going... There's that lad that was up trying to tell jokes over there. And even the Turkish lads were kind of nudging themselves and going, oh, turkey, 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 look at himself over there, you know. And Jesus. it was so bad. And my girlfriend, uh, my wife now, my girlfriend at the time. She stayed with you. Oh, yeah, somehow managed. That's how I knew she had a, I had a keeper because she didn't get the fucking bus back to Dublin yeah. <laughs> at one o'clock in the morning. Oh, your grand She stuck on my side and she patted me on the back and said, oh, you know, it was, it was good. It was good, you know. It was yeah, some of it, you know, it was good. I thought it was good, and I was like, oh, "God love you, all right." <laughs> yeah, God love you. No, <laughs> but I got well, you. Almost start to feel pity for her. I swear to God, I got, I got, I got <laughs> absolutely destroyed, drunk. Okay, and I don't, I don't know how I got to bed. I got destroyed, drunk. I was, I was sick of it, and I woke up the next day still in the clothes. I went to bed, and and I was like, "Fuck it, I'm going down for this free mm. breakfast." Okay, so I walked over and I pressed the button for the elevator. Okay, no. and I'm, I'm waiting for her dying with a hangover. I go bing. And opens the door. No. The lady that fucking leaned in. <laughs> and her husband is in the lift. And I have to get in and sit with them uh, in the in the fucking elevator. We go down, we go in for the breakfast, and the whole breakfast area just goes shh, quiet. Oh. And you see all these heads look oh. up like meerkats of six elderly couples oh. and five Turkish men. Oh the Turkish lads were actually staying. These Turkish lads were there, and just the buzz in the room was there's that shit lad <laughs> They didn't even feel pity for you at that stage no. they, just, they were just starting to hate you It was the death that just kept Oh my and That is why it's this week's worst gig ever Oh that is worst gig ever Yeah that's that's gold But you know what the best thing about that Tom If you listen to future podcasts you know we're going to talk Oh this yeah <laughs> I've already I had one kind of to line up But now I have one going No there's one that's actually going to make people squirm <laughs> So stay tuned for that. Why one. do we? Well, you wonder why though, wouldn't you? You wonder why you keep doing it when that horror is going on, like you know. You know, every gig is potentially that gig. It's it doesn't turn out to be that way, and you have gigs that are great yeah. crack, and you have gigs that are great mm. fun. But every time you step on a stage, you you are potentially. You're walking on that landmine, like. You're walking on that landmine. You're hoping someone will just try and kind of knock you into a pit. <sighs> Jesus, yeah. So that the explosion won't tear your legs off. But um. 
but yeah, that's uh, that's the uh, worst gig ever, yeah. and we're going to move I on liked to, our, uh, I liked to our to our closing segment for this podcast. This is, uh, I suppose, yeah, well, this is a good idea. This was this was good, and I suppose a lot of people can relate to it. I suppose we can be stereotypical for the people who can't relate to it. Absolutely, because up until now we've had to put on airs and graces, but now we can be called cheese. <laughs> yeah, we can be absolute. Yeah, we were we were totes my goats up until this. Now yeah. we can. Be, well, it's, it, two reason, twofold why myself and Jerry get on because. We were of pure boom cultures too. We got straight into construction from Absolutely. one field or another, and we spent as long as as long as the boom would keep us in construction, and then spat us out the other end. There's not one thing we couldn't tell you you're doing wrong. About yeah. That. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Some man for pointing that stuff. I swear to God, there's not a hole I haven't stored in. But into. we. Something I suppose every every culture at some stage and the, the, the big smoke we both live up here in the we county. Both, if we not, both live up here. Yeah, we live yeah. in the county of the big smoke. It's anyway, born at this stage. Yeah, but back when we were small. Oh my good God! It was it was amazing. Oh, it was God, a thing. Amazing. Which is why we call this segment Culture's Day Cult- Out. <laughs> <laughs> Culture's Day Out. Culture's Day Out. Well, I don't know. We'll 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 we'll. we'll yeah, we'll work on that. We'll, we'll work, work on that. that. We'll work on that. Yeah, I'm one of my favourite ones. The, back in the day, the old man. He's still fit. He's still as fit as a flea. The old man. He's he, she, like the guy is in his sixties and still has a six pack. Right. He's just there's something wrong. I don't, but they live for years and years on that on dad's side of the family. Like my grandfather just bought a brand new car. He's ninety four. <laughs> how, how? What? That's it. You know what? <laughs> really? You couldn't have spared that a few quid and thrown it my way, like ninety four. But he doesn't see an end in sight. That's the thing. Like on a logical way, like his mother lived to one hundred and four. Yeah. His father lived to ninety eight. So he still got he still got like a good oh, innings yeah. in him. Oh yeah. I mean, he's got he's got to the point where that car could go for scrappage value <laughs> by the time he's ready. Yeah. But uh, the old man used to run a lot. He used to do Dublin City marathons and things like that. And this was oh, our right. well, he day. wasn't fucking around. No, no, he used to do proper running, running shit like. And and what age were you, Tom? I was. I can. My earliest is probably four up until probably ten. Um, I, he was running these road races and so things like that. Six straight. And you're from you're from I'm from, from South Tipperary, so it was a long haul because you had to come through places. You like it was fine. Now you can do it in two hours straight yeah, down the motorway. Straight after it. But back then there was Port Leash, uh, Abbey Leagues, Port Arlington, all these shithole places. I can remember spending three hours just trying to get through Abbey Leagues. Yes, you could puck a slitter yes. from one end of Abbey Leagues to the fucking other. Yes, it's yes, just yes. absolute <laughs> fucking gridlock. But we we went up. I remember Dad, he was running. And I, I, a handful of things. I remember Rhythm Was a Dancer was big at the time. Okay. A trip to Abracababra blew my fucking brains. <laughs> I was just in. What did you get in Abracababra? What did the culture get in Abracababra? Oh, yeah. In the, well, this is the late 80s. This think. is the late 80s. So there was nothing fancy. It was burger and chips. That was it. Cheese was fancy. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> Cheese was fancy. There was, oh, they, had, they had this taco sauce, which is essentially they called a taco sauce. But it was... Ketchup and mayonnaise mixed together. Is that not all the taco sauce is? That's how. That's what I thought. You think there'd be a drop of heat or something in it, but there's not. That's all it was. Something taco. Do you know what they call a taco chip in the dog? What do they call it? A Mexican chip. Um, of course. Well, yeah, <laughs> a Mexican chip. Because yeah, heaven forbid they'd be anything to dog. I mean, the Hispanic capital of Ireland. Yeah. I swear to God, I, I was on the. I was on the. There's a burrito bar on every corner in Dundalk. I remember, I was on the. Um, I was on like the sandwich run one lunch. This place I was working on Dundalk, and this guy asked me for a Mexican chip with no mints. And I said, "You ever fuck off and don't mince with, with no mints? With no mints? How is that possible?" So just. So Ketchup and mayo you mixed want together. Yeah, you want cheese chips as well. Yeah, you want. cheese chips. Yeah. <laughs> but we went up this one year. Now, what I can remember from it was two things. I can remember obviously it always those bits and pieces. But I can remember going to do going to see the turtles because the race he'd be fucked off on the race between signing and everything. It's not like you could follow him. What what could he time it out? Was he like a three hour man? Yeah, him? he was into the three hours. But I mean, between by the time he'd signed up and everything, by the time he. would Showered up and everything finished. We probably had a five-hour window at least. Like so, we had Let time. Loose in time. We had time to go see the wax museum. Right. I got stuck in the wax museum. Where I could tell you where you got stuck in the wax museum. Did you get yeah. stuck in the little tunnels. Yeah. Why? Because yeah. it was a fat youngster came plowing up the outside of me. Fat Dublin kid came plowing up the outside of me in the tunnel. Couldn't wait for me to get out the other and jammed me in it. They had to poke him in the head with a stick <sighs> to get him to go backwards. This is back when the, the Wax Museum was up uh, where the Maldron Hotel That's is. That's exactly now, it, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah. But I was a fucking snot to wax me. Oh, I wouldn't, I, I, wouldn't. I, I, I dined out on that for fucking five years when I got back down to Tipperary. But I remember I was utterly starstruck by seeing Angus McNally. Do you remember he had the big fuzzy microphone for a head? He, he had a fro for a white guy. He had a big fro. Where did you see him? I saw going? him interviewing somebody by the side of the race, and the guy seemed like nine foot tall to me. And I was just absolutely welded to the ground. I was thinking, Angus McFucking Nally. <laughs> this is fucking amazing. Whereabouts in the street is this? He was at somewhere. It was. This is O'Connell Street. It, it was either O'Connell Street or just off. It was, I don't know where, which way they turned up. I'm not, I don't think it was O'Connell Street. Your memory, your memory will play tricks on you now. You know. It definitely. It it was, it was, it was, it was close to O'Connell Street because all the action was happening near right, where it okay. was. So, lo and behold, get to meet Angus McNally. Got brought up to him the whole lot because I, I, somebody <laughs> spotted while I was with my mother how riveted by the scenario. <laughs> Guy brought me up, got to meet him. The whole works, absolutely amazed. And I suppose what I was maybe five. We'll say I was thirty-two last year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in the RTE canteen. Who stands up behind me? No. Angus McNally. I said, oh, this, is, this is going to be amazing. <laughs> this is going to be amazing. This story could go two ways, isn't it? <laughs> and it's going to go exactly how you know it's going to go. <laughs> <laughs> he shoved me aside. <laughs> Didn't even say excuse me or anything. Went straight over to get himself a cup of milk. He was balding. All his fun. <laughs> drinking milk. Oh. It was the worst. It was the biggest heart crush. I'm like, do you? What? We had it. What? We had a moment, we Angus. Had, you absolute bastard, Angus McNally. I, I, yeah, I hate Dublin. I hate Dublin. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. And that was. Yeah, that was. That was essentially my. Yeah, that was my day out in the big smoke. My day out yeah, that was my day out in the big smoke. Brilliant. And Angus McNally can go to hell, <laughs> and his cup of milk. <laughs> Coming Who's over. Fucking cup of milk Who from? gets a cup of milk? <laughs> a four-year-old child at four in the morning with a biscuit. What the, did he get? Was it warm milk? Was no, he, he got it in one of those plastic little yolks. He pulled it out of the mil, or out of the water fountain. You know the little plastic yeah. squidgy cups, and walked over to the the milk fountain where you would go to right. fill your tea or whatever, and filled a cup of milk for himself. I can't. And what, did he drink it? Did you watch yeah, him? Drank I drank it. I, he drank one there and then refilled it. And off, he, he just yeah. stood there and fucking down like a goat down to shot a cow. of milk. He took down the shot of milk Like a Sambuca Son of a bitch Oh I hated that man Right on that spot I held him in such regard He can go to hell Oh my god Culture's day out for that one Culture's day out for that one Yeah Alright I think we'll we'll wrap that up Yeah we'll stick a pin in that one uh, Alright yeah. Uh, I mean, you can uh, you can follow us on Twitter Tom and Jerry Show um, at Tom and Jerry Show. I tell you, I high five myself when I got that. Yeah, that was good. That was very good. That was good. Also, yeah, if you want to, you can find <laughs> us too. We're going to have this up on SoundCloud and everything else. So of course, you're going to be listening to this unless it's through some other forum. We'll I don't be checking, know. Did you listen? Yeah, absolutely. As well as that, you can. If you have any, if anybody has ever any, I suppose we'll probably branch into the hardware and the construction side of things. Towards the line, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll start doing things. So we'll like start that, getting so. questions off people, and not the regular ones that you're going to. Send in to Duncan. Not those ones. We want ones. Well, why there's hair growing on the underside of things? You know, that's what we we will be wanting. But so you the, can you can get us at, at Tom and Jerry Show on Twitter, or I'm at, at Jerry McBride, and you're at, at Tom underscore O'Mahony. Very easy to find. Ah, yeah, the yeah, underscore. Pal, I had to. I had to. <laughs> Somebody went for something oh, else. Sucker. There was a Tom O'Mahony. I couldn't believe it. I was like, it was like the first time I ever opened a Hotmail account. I went Hotmail at Hotmail, at but hotmail. I wrote Mail as an M A L E. I thought I'm a genius. Yeah, you, your options are Hotmail, one, two, three. Yeah. Uh, somebody had already thought of it. I was uh, absolutely you know, it was, raging. It, it, I would have been absolutely raging if I was on Twitter and I had to be at Jerry McBride too. I would have been... At <laughs> Jerry McBride too. I'd just not go on Twitter. Oh, <laughs> it was... I, I, it killed me to go for the underscore, but I went... Yeah, I went for it. I had no other choice. So I wrote it. Mine is in capitals. So now whenever somebody... You know, was ever ever somebody just tags me in something, yeah. I look like they're shouting my name. <laughs> yeah, Tom <'cause> O'Mahony. Because <laughs> I'm just furious over the underscore. So okay, that's us all there, and we will. Uh, yeah, see should you. we see you back next week? I suppose. Yeah, next for, week for for your next episode of the Tom and Jerry Show. Later's. Good luck. <laughs>